So let's talk about this idea of uh, regression. In particular, we're going to focus on linear regression. So regression is all about this idea of building a model that allows us to talk about the continuous relationship between two variables. So I have uh, two variables here, x0 and, and y. And we have a set of paired observations. So this dot here means that I'm observing x0 at this point uh, here, and I'm observing y simultaneously at, at this point here. Uh, and, and then each point has its own coordinate in, in this space, x0 and, and y. And what we'd like to be able to do is build up a model that allows us to take as input an x0 and predict what y should be. The question is, what is that? Uh, is that model. Typically, the first thing that we reach for when we're trying to model a relationship between two continuous variables is that of a linear model. So here's an equation for such a model. Uh, there's our x0 here. Uh, and then we have two parameters. This w0 refers to really the gain or the slope of the, the line that, that represents this relationship. And w1 represents the bias y hat here represents the value that is going to be predicted from this model as a function of x0. Um, but ahead of time, we're going to pick this w0 and w1. So let me go ahead and draw in uh, one such line. So I've, I've picked a, a w0. It's a fairly shallow w0 uh, and, and a w1. And that gives us one particular relationship. And the first question for you is whether or not this represents uh, a good model for uh, how x0 and y relate to one another. And hopefully your first observation is that, well, we might be capturing the relationship uh, with respect to these points up here, but we're actually performing really poorly in terms of uh, this set of points. So if I have an x0, this point right here, um, the, the true y is down at this level here, but the predicted y is sitting way up here. This is uh, a model that does not perform particularly well for capturing this relationship. So here's another model. In this case, the, uh, the w0 is actually uh, positive. So it's leaning in the opposite direction there. And, and this also doesn't really capture our data uh, very well. There's another one. The, the slope is probably getting close to about right but W1 is probably not particularly well chosen here. And here's another model. So the, the question to you is, I've given you four possible models, which one do you uh, prefer? And hopefully your, your answer is that you kind of like the, the pink model. So the question is, how do we make this choice of this pink model over the other options that we uh, looked at? So we talked already about this idea of uh, there being a difference between what the model, so if I have an x0 here, there's a difference between what the model would predict in terms of a y uh, as compared to what the true value is of the observation that we have at this point. So how do we formalize this idea? And there are a variety of different ways to, to do this. This is one such metric that we often reach for first. It has some nice mathematical conveniences, and this is why we end up reaching for this first. But this idea between, so first off, k indexes over all of the different points. So k0, say, might be this one here, k1 here, k2 here, et cetera. And this difference here is uh, the difference between what the true y is for a given point. So this point here, the true y is at this height here. y hat is the uh, predicted y given our x0. So, so that actually sits down at, at this level right here. So that in this particular, for this particular point, there is a, a fair difference here. The y hat comes from uh, this linear model right here. And one other thing that, that uh, hopefully you've noticed is that we've also squared this error. And, and then summed over all of the different points and divided by the number of points that we have. So this particular metric, you'll often see it referred to as mean squared error or least mean squared error. And many of our tools for linear regression will pick our model parameters, in this case, our W0 and W1, such that they make this total mean squared error the smallest 
possible value over all choices of W0 and W1. Once we have the model, we can make predictions with it uh, based on new information. So for example, I have uh, a new X0 that's coming in. Perhaps this is a, a new observation from a sensor or something along those lines. And I, I don't know what the true Y ought to be, but by making use of this equation, I can compute a, an estimated Y hat for that X0. Okay, and that, and that is the value there.